In this video, I'm going to take a look at how to find the variance and the standard deviation for a discrete random variable. Um, before we do, we need to actually have a think about what the variance and the standard deviation are. Uh, for some of you, this might be a recap if you've seen it before, but obviously some of us actually never seen this um, variance or standard deviation. So before we can jump into like discrete probability distributions, just a bit of a sort of an instruction on what the standard deviation represents. Um, so when, when we're thinking about variance and standard deviation, it's a measure of how spread out the data is. Okay, it's called a measure of spread. It's not like a mean, it's not an average. Like a, an average tells you like one value which represents, you know, where the, the data is centralized about. But the standard deviation and the variance tell you like how spread out the data is. So if your numbers are all really far apart, you're going to have a larger standard deviation. If the, the outcomes are all very closely grouped together, you're going to have a smaller standard deviation. And the notation that we use is, is sigma or sigma squared. So sigma stands for the standard deviation and the variance is sigma squared. In other words, if I know what the standard deviation was, so say for example, if the standard deviation was three, that would tell me that the variance would be nine. And if I knew the variance was nine, I'd know the standard deviation would be three. Not minus three because you can't have a negative spread. Like remember this just represents how spread out the data is. Okay. So if you look at this, I've just made put a quick um sample together. So if imagine our sample was five, six, six, eight, and nine. And this um from this data I said, well the average outcome is six point eight. Um again we use mu to stand for the mean. Um so this distribution the average outcome is six point eight. But I, I don't care so much about the average outcome. What I want to know is how spread out the numbers are. Okay, so are the numbers really close to group together, or are they really spread out? And the way that we calculate the standard deviation is we use this formula here. And again, let's not get lost in the formula. Let's just have a, a feel for what this is actually calculating, because it's not too bad to, when, once you think about this. If I know the average was six point eight. Uh, but I want to know like how far away the numbers are, like how spread out they are. What we can do is this calculation. So we do every value and we subtract the mean. So each value, take away the mean, that's what X bar stands for. Uh, I know there's a lot of notation going on here, but X bar is the sample mean. Mu stands for the population mean. I suppose technically I could have, I could have called that X bar. Like if, if this was a sample taken from a distribution, the sample mean is 6.8. But if this was like the the actual distribution, like I've got a you know a, a bag, and in that bag the the balls are numbered five, six, six, eight, and nine. That represents the whole distribution. I can use the letter mu. If it's the total distribution and the average of the total distribution, we use mu. If it's a sample that you've taken, we'll use x bar, right? Um. So anyway, what we're doing here is we're we're doing x, the individual individual value subtracted that subtract the mean from that. So five is less than the mean, and that would be minus 1.8. Six, subtract the mean would be minus 0.8. Minus 0.8 again. Eight, minus 6.8 would be 1.2. And nine, minus 6.8 would give us 2.2. Okay. So what these numbers now represent is it's telling you like how far away each value is from from, from the mean. And if, if these were all large numbers, that would mean that the value the data was spread out if they were further away from the mean. If these were all really small numbers, it would mean that the data was really close to the mean. Okay. Now what this formula does, it it's a way of of getting a, just a numerical value, like a, a one number that represents how, how spread out the, all the data is, not just how far away one number is. On average, it's like an it's it's an average spread. That's one way of thinking about it. Um, so you might say, well, if you want to know how far away they are spread out from each other, why can't we just add them all up? Because that 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 number, if we added them all up, it'd tell you like how far away each one was, the spread of each one. The problem is if we do add them all up, because some are less than the mean, and some are more than the mean. When we add them up, um, the answer would just be zero. So what this formula does for us is we square it, and then we square root. Because that is a way of avoiding this problem with the negatives. Okay. Now I'm not going to go through the whole calculation, but if I, if I did this, if I did squared these values, added them all up, and then divide by however many there are, n in this case would be five because there's five values in our distribution, and then square root it. 
I've got the calculator to do it for me, so we can actually do this really quickly on the graphical calculator. So if you go on to menu stats, and I've entered this list of numbers, so I've got 5, 6, 6, 8, and 9. And then what I pressed was calc, one variable. And then it, it does loads of calculations for us, so it told me that x bar, see that, the mean is 6.8. Um, but it also tells me that the standard deviation, which is sigma x, in this distribution is 1.4969, I'm going to say 1.47 to 2 dp. So I know it's, it's not like you haven't gone too in depth into this topic, but it's like a whistle stop tour, and essentially we just need to realize that the standard deviation gives us a number that tells us how spread out the values are. Um, maybe just that, we'll spend a little bit longer on just before we do get stuck into the discrete random variables. Let's think about what would happen if I change one of those numbers. So if you had 5, 6, 6, 8 and 100, how would that affect? Well, first of all, how would it affect the mean? Second of all, how would it affect the standard deviation? Maybe just pause and think about that for a second. So if I go back and change this value now to 100 and then it tells me that the mean now for the distribution is 25. Clearly that's going to increase the average, isn't it? But what's also happened, the standard deviation is now 37.51. It's also significantly increased how spread out the data is, isn't it? Because like because that value there, the outline value is so far away from all the others, the data is really spread out now. In other words, the standard deviation is larger. And that's all we need to really know. Like if the, if the standard deviation is large, the data is spread out. It could be affected by one value, but in general that won't happen in the exam. Like if the values were just generally more spread out, so like say if I'd have had 5, 10, 18, 27, 61, like the number, if the numbers would have looked like this, then that clearly it would have a larger standard deviation than the original list that we looked at. Okay. Okay, so the formula that we get in the formula book, it looks like this. It tells us sigma squared, which is the variance, and it's the expected value of x squared minus the mean squared. Okay, the, I would like you to maybe highlight this and think about it like this. Like the expected value of x squared we've seen earlier, the expected value of x squared is the sum of x squared times by the probability minus the mean, which is just the expected value of x which is the sum of x times by the probability. So quite often in the question, you might already know what the mean is, and then you can, you can use that to help you with this. If, if not, we might have to just do the whole calculation. So this question says find the variance and standard deviation. First of all, I'm going to figure out what the expected value of x is. So the expected value of x would be 1 times 0 0.1 plus 2 times 0 0.3 plus 3 times 0.2 plus 4 times 0.3 plus 5 times 0.1 expect the value of x squared would be 1 squared times 0.1 plus 2 squared times 0.3 plus 3 squared times 0.2 plus 4 squared times 0.3 plus 5 squared times 0.1. Okay, so I've just worked these out. And the expected value of x I'm getting to be 3. And again, just pause for a second and think about if that seems to make sense. Um, <laughs> I've actually just spotted something. I don't know if anyone knows this. Let's look at the symmetry for this distribution. Um, I could have probably actually just written this down. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. This is perfectly symmetrical around about 3. So that, that makes me confident in my answer. Like the, the average outcome you'd expect to get would be 3. Um, the expected value of x squared, again, think about if the numbers change on the spinner, if you had 1 squared, 2 squared, and so on, would be 
Okay, so once we've got both of these, we can see that the variance of x is the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. Really common mistake that people make actually is they forget to subtract this bit, and I'm not really sure why people make this mistake. Like the form is in the formula booklet, but I've seen a lot of students forget to subtract this. So the variance of x would be this minus this, which would give us 1.4. Okay, once we know the variance, standard deviation. Also to notice this sigma is just the square root of the variance. And we can leave it as a third, square root of 1.4. Uh, let me just see what that gives us if we put it into the calculator. Did it change this? Square root of 1.4. You could write it as root 35 over 5. Obviously, because we're working in statistics now, like we're not working in the, in the world of pure maths, like quite often it'll say like you don't have to write it in an exact answer, but if you can leave it in an exact answer, I don't see why not. Um, if we were going to write it as a decimal, it would be like somewhere around about 1.183 to three decimal places. And again, just to, to get a, a, a little feel for whether that seems like a sensible answer or not, like this tells us how spread out the data is. And if you look at it, most of the outcomes are going to be grouped around, like the average is three. A really high proportion of the data is going to be either three, two, or four. So like, they're you know they're only going to be one away, one above or one below, and then a couple of them are two above, a couple of them are two below. So you know on average, it's, that's like what how spread out the data is. It seems sort of like a sensible answer to me. Okay, all right, nice one, guys.